Today's Feedback Friday student is very new to the harp and asked some really fantastic questions, such as how to avoid buzzing and also the importance of bracketing. So let's go ahead and meet Gail, and hopefully the feedback I give her is something you can apply to your own playing as well. This is Gail. Nice to meet you. <laughs> I'm going to play all through the night. I've been playing the harp now for about three weeks, so I'm a very new one. Um, wow. Only three weeks, and she was so brave enough to send in a feedback video. I hope for those of you who are also at the beginning of your harp journey that this can be really encouraging for you. Just my major question, because I'm doing this all online, I get no feedback, and that's what I need really bad, is um, would you say that bracketing and placing are the most important things for a smooth play? Because I, um, of course, I'm feeling like it's very choppy. And when I place my next group of notes, a lot of time I dampen the sound that I have just played. And I was curious if you have any suggestions for that, not to do that. I do have arthritis, rheumatoid arthritis in my hands. So they look very wonky and it's bothersome to me because I can't I don't even know if I'm doing it correctly. I mean, I go through the motions, but it looks so bad. I'm just not sure if my technique is on getting there. I guess I've got way, lots of improvement to do. I know we have a lot of students in our community who have arthritis and that can make it really challenging to play. So I'm gonna give you some tips to adjust your hand position that can hopefully help with that. But anyway, I just wanted to thank you for doing this and I'm gonna, Get ready to play. Here we go. All right, let's watch her play. Okay, I just had to pause and comment on how lovely those wind chimes sound as she's playing. It's so pretty. And Gail, it's great to see that even after just three weeks, you're really playing out and getting a good tone out of the string. So I encourage everyone watching to not be shy or timid when you're playing the harp, but to really just really dig into the strings and really project that beautiful sound. Let's keep going. Nice job of coordinating the two hands together. I can tell that this is not an easy song, so nice job with that. Okay, Carrie, that's it. That's about the best I can do on this song. I've, I've played it so many times and it still sounded like it sounded. Thank you. Have a good day, Carrie. Awesome. Nice job, Gail. I'm seeing so many good things and we're going to get to those, but I did want to talk about the importance of choosing music that's the right level for your playing. So I can tell how much you enjoy playing this piece, but since you're at the very start of your heart playing journey, I think it's important to go back to an easier piece, one where you don't have to worry too much about the notes or rhythm or coordinating the two hands, but it allows you to really focus on developing good technique. So a few songs I would recommend from our library would be After the Rain, Mahogany Moon, and Breath of Air. None of those songs use more than three fingers, and that's a really great opportunity to just make sure that you are doing good bracketing and paying attention to your hand position. And then you can always work your way up to all through the night and I bet it's gonna feel a lot easier. But of course you sent in this video so I'm gonna give you some feedback on what I was seeing you playing with this piece and you can apply that to the other music that you're playing as well. Let me address your question about playing with arthritis. So first, let's just kind of walk through the basic hand position. So we wanna make sure if you were just to place on any two random notes that we have our elbow up and away from our body, we have a dip in the wrist, thumb high, other fingers pointed down, and we have that web space open between our thumb and second finger. And if you find that this hand position that we teach aggravates your arthritis, I would recommend adjusting the angle of your fingers in whatever way you need to 
just as long as you're able to keep that web space open as much as you can. And also we want the hand to be as relaxed as possible. So make sure that your third, fourth and pinky aren't tucked into your palm, but that they're out and relaxed. Another thing you can do is as you're closing, I know we always talk about French fries versus curly fries, which is still very important. But if you find that it's a struggle for you to close your fingers entirely, if that kind of aggravates your arthritis or maybe they can't go that far, just make it a goal to move them in that direction versus coming up like this. And just going in that direction alone is gonna set you on the right track. So that's my recommendation for adjusting for arthritis. And overall, just I would talk to your doctor and show them exactly how you play the heart, maybe show them a video and ask them for their input on like what is okay, what they would recommend not doing. A lot of students find that playing the harp actually really helps their arthritis. So hopefully it will do the same for you. Let's talk about your question about the importance of bracketing as we play. So bracketing is important because it helps us achieve efficiency and makes our playing really smooth. The harp is unique from other instruments in that we actually oftentimes place a group of notes before playing them versus playing one note at a time and just kind of jumping around with one finger, right? It makes it sound a lot more connected if we place a group of notes together versus separating them. Gil, when I was watching you play, I noticed several instances where you might have placed some notes out of order or you were placing one at a time, and that was kind of tripping your other fingers up and causing you to play um, some notes out of order there. So make it a goal to be really disciplined in placing only the notes within each bracket and placing them together as a group. This is gonna feel a lot easier if you start with a piece that's more on the simple side that has the brackets and fingering written in, and consistency is really key to make sure you get really comfortable with it. So it might feel kind of awkward at first, but it really does make playing the heart feel a lot easier and it's going to pay off in the long run. So it is worth it. I know you can do it. So another thing is having long nails when you're playing the harp, which I always feel bad telling students this, especially you, Gail, like your nails, I can see they're so beautiful, but I typically keep my nails, um, they don't go any longer than my fingertip. If they do, it starts to create this tingy sound and they start to rub against the strings as I place. And then I find myself like avoiding the strings and it just, it causes some unnecessary um, turbulence that you don't want when you're playing. So my advice would be to file or trim your nails down so that they don't go any further than your fingertip. And the other thing that I think is contributing to the buzzing is that you're replacing on the next set of notes a little bit too soon and also not being entirely sure exactly which notes that you're placing on. So the first thing, before we practice replacing later, we need to make sure that we can replace securely on the strings because if you could place it then you can play it is what I like to say and knowing where you're placing on the strings is what gives you the confidence to replace a little bit later so I want to show you a few exercises you can do to practice landing really securely and then we'll practice landing later on the strings so the first exercise that we're going to do I'm going to take it from that section that you played Gail with the thirds and not entirely sure what the notes were but um, we're just going to make something up on C and E I'm an octave higher than middle C with two in one. So go ahead and place those notes and really slowly, all we're gonna practice is just moving to the next notes really slowly. We're aiming to land with two and one exactly together, squeezing those notes, memorizing what that shape feels like, and letting your eyes get to the next strings before your fingers do. And just keep going really slowly, making sure each finger or the both fingers land at the same time. You can just go, you can end on the last C and E. Okay, so that's the first exercise. How did that go? It's okay if it's feeling a little bit shaky at first, but just make it a goal to land with both fingers exactly together. Now in the second exercise, we're gonna practice landing a little bit later. So let's hold each note for two beats and then we're gonna land right at the last minute. Oftentimes buzzing comes from replacing too soon on the next strings and not letting the previous notes ring for their full note value. So what we're gonna do is play those same notes two and one with C and E. And we're gonna go one, two, one, two two, one, two. And you can do it much slower than I'm doing it, but the goal is you wanna land right before or even on the next beat. One, two, one, two, one, 
too, because oftentimes we'll place sooner on the strings if we feel like we don't have enough time to get there, but you have more time than you think, especially if you know exactly where you're gonna be placing. So after you can confidently land on the strings, now you can practice landing a little bit later. So to summarize, we wanna practice landing really securely on the strings, and then from there, you can practice landing a little bit later and kind of pushing yourself out of your comfort zone a little bit and trusting that you have the time to get there. But now I wanna hear from you. Have you had similar questions or struggles to Gail? Let us know in the comments, and then click here to watch me give Roxanne feedback on her hand position in a slightly different way.